In the latest edition of NYMR TV, we're back at Bridge 30 as the public get a chance to inspect the 145-year-old iron structure. It's the bridge that's at the centre of the Bridges and Wheels appeal. Being able to walk down the railway, which you wouldn't be able to normally do, that's quite interesting in itself. Visit any railway and there's only so far you're allowed to wander. For health and safety reasons, the track is out of bounds. And it's always been that way as well, as this old Northeastern Railway sign proves. So a chance to walk the track down to Bridge 30 was one that was just too good to miss. NYMR TV cameras followed the visitors on their guided walk from Gothland Station. Under supervision and safe in the knowledge that train movements were suspended, they were able to inspect the Iron Bridge close up and discover why it's simply got to be replaced. I think it's important that people see what the bridge is actually like and that they have, uh, a lot of people have been very generous in contributing towards the appeal. Um, uh, it's a, a one-off, it's a quite a, not quite a unique, but it's a very special bridge uh, in many ways and I think it's difficult for people uh, to appreciate it unless they're, they're engineers and I think it... Uh, it, it helps a lot. Uh, a lot of people are not used to walking on the side of the railway um, and uh, on the bridge itself and uh, they've perhaps travelled over it by train but to actually see it uh, in real life and touch it is very good. You can actually see what they're actually going to do and the description we've been given of the works they're going to carry out and how they're going to do that. I think it's, it's very interesting and just to be able to actually see the bridge and walk on the bridge. The North York Moors is very special to me. I love this railway particularly. I never come here without seeing happy smiley faces, old people, young people, and seeing this bridge and thinking of the men who built it, and there would have been men I'm sure, in the 1860s, and seeing all the wonderful patterns of the rivets in the, in the, um, in the structure and knowing that uh, it's lasted this long, everything has its day. Is the track going to be double or single? So it would be single because further down there's Beckhole Bridge uh, with the bigger engines like St Nigel Gresley. Uh, we have to have single track through that and down at the shed. Uh, uh, again, we, ha we can't make it double running line. So, and we're not allowed to have connections from single to double line on the one in 49 gradient. So we are, it's either all single or all double. So we've decided that we'd have it single. Very interesting. It's in a bit of a mess to say the least. You don't realise when you're travelling over it, do you? So the, the bridge is a combination of cast iron, wrought iron, steel. It's had various alterations to it. And there is no doubt that it could, you could repair it. Uh, it would cost far more money and we would still have the design faults with it. So it would be very much like uh, the old, uh, Only Fools and Horses situation with the, with the, with the brush when it's had three new handles and four new brooms, you know, so, <laughs> so, so we'd have a lot of new stuff on it, but we, would still, we still couldn't get rid of the basic design faults in it that, were, that originate from the 1864 design. Um, they tried in 1906, and the top part they tried with the centre girder in 1908, and, and it, it is now so, so, so difficult. And we are indeed running big engines over it. So it will be a new bridge, and, and um, we'll be uh, one in 49 gradient and 25 mile an hour. Finally, in this episode of NYMR TV, we discover that Gothland Station is now busier than it's ever been. The reason is it's now the terminus of the southern section of the railway. Now, while Gromont is still open over the winter handling NYMR services on the Est Valley Line, because of the replacement of Bridge 30, trains can only run north from Pickering as far as Gothland. The station was, of course, made famous in TV's Heartbeat, and station master and signalman John Bruce is responsible for the smooth running and turnaround of all the trains there. I, I would say, say not. It's uh, when, when you look back to the history of the station, where it was a ru rural village station, uh, 15, 20 passengers a day probably, as opposed to hundreds, if not at sometimes thousands of people going passing through in the, in the course of a day. And you're much busier in the signal box now? Much busier in the signal box. Uh, more trains pass through here per day than in British Railways days when we're running a peak service and uh, currently with the trains from Pickering 
are terminating here, turning round to go back to uh, to Pickering. So that all makes more intricate work for the signalman uh, in getting trains in the right platforms, moving the diesel rail car, which has just can't come in, that's got to go over into another platform to let the dining train in next. So yes, very interesting. So it's, it's quite complicated considering the layout here. It, isn't it, it? can be, yes. We, it's, we've got a fairly flexible layout here that we, we, we put in in the 70s and that, that's proving its worth at the moment.